Hey everyone, I'm back with another DIY Country Meets Farmhouse. And Dorsan, this is for you. You were asking me if I would or could do anything with a standing cheese grater. Yes, I can. I did and I have. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so when I decorated with the cheese, uh, cheese grater years ago, what I did is, well, I did two different things, so I'm going to show you the two things I did way back when. For a freestanding, where you just want to put it on the counter, I'm going to show you that one first, and then the next one I'm going to show you where you hang it on the wall. And so, let me show you the uh, supplies that I'm using. Okay. First, from Hobby Lobby, this material is absolutely adorable. Completely farmhouse, and it's a grayish, it's almost a grayish, well, I can see like a burnt umber type color with the gray and then the cream. And I'm going to cut out a piece and make a dishcloth out of it. You know, that you dry dishes with, I, obviously I'm not gonna use it, Although you could if you wanted. I mean, flour sacks, that's what they used to use. And this is, uh, this is more of a duck. Anyway, for the hanging one, I'm going to cut a piece of this. Here. And um, some wooden spoons. These, I think, were 78 cents at Walmart. My tried and true faux eggs. And I think I'm going to go ahead and try to um, and then this time I think I'm going to go ahead and try to just put a little bit of brown on the edges like you see when it's galvanized where it's more weathered looking. But I'm not going to do that with this. So I'm going to try that. I also have a piece of cardboard that I cut up from a box because I'm going to fit it in here to stuff it up inside. Oh, probably about halfway so the wooden spoons will stay in and the eggs so they don't just fall out. For the uh, hanging cheese grater, I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, well, I'll, I'll keep it halfway because you don't want it falling out obviously because you're going to have the uh, material hanging from that. Okay, so I'll be back in just a minute. I just wanted to show you all of the supplies I was going to be using. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to put a little bit of this stain. And I got this from Hobby Lobby, and it's the Focard Espresso, and it's the antiquing medium. So I'm going to try that and just see what happens. If it works, great. If it doesn't, oh well. And I have down my paper, paper that they use to wrap things up with. Okay, as you can see, I'm just putting a little bit. And I'm gonna rub this in. I'm not gonna leave it like that. Like I said, I don't even know if it's gonna work and if it doesn't, that's no big deal to me. But I do like the dark because that is what my, my kitchen is a mixture of these colors. I'm just gonna hit it here and there. Give it kind of a aged. And again, I don't even know if this is gonna stick to the metal to be honest with you. You know, and I was wondering, I wonder if alcohol inks would work. You know, the Tim Holtz. I know that there's one that's for non-porous. Oh, well, doesn't matter. And I got this grater from uh, Walmart. It was three something. You know, the thing is, everywhere I look for these graters now, they have the plastic on the uh, handle. 
and I am going to do a DIY on one of those. I don't like them as well when I'm decorating, but I did find something I could do with it I thought that would be kind of cute. But I like these because, you know, these are what the old ones are like with the metal handle. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get a paper towel. And if it works, I'm just gonna hit and miss it all over the place. Okay, let's see how this works. And it's not going to be being washed or, you know, touched other than hanging on the wall. And it probably would stick better if I was to use uh, the toilet bowl cleaner that they use to pour all over it to make it take the shine out. But I don't feel like doing that, so. And they did have this rust stuff at um, Hobby Lobby, but it was $8 and I didn't want to spend $8, but, and I was using my coupon for something else. But if I get up close, you can see where the brown, once it dries. So I think I'm just gonna leave it like that. Like I said, it's really no big deal to me. I was just trying it out. It's not like I just have to have it look like that. I'm going to do this a little bit further and then I'll be right back. Okay guys, I want to show you now. All I did is I went ahead and I used the sponge brush, but then I took a paper towel and I just dabbed it and I dabbed all over. So now it looks really old and, and I'm going to let that sit for a few minutes and dry. And while that's drying, I'm just gonna cut a piece of this material and cut the uh, cardboard to size for what I need. And as soon as I get that done, I'll be back. So, oh, and I wanted to tell you, the reason that I didn't, um, I could have spray painted this like I did my apothecary jars. If you go back, if you're new to my channel, I um, altered candlesticks and turned them into apothecary jar holders and in that I spray painted the knobs of the glass <clears throat> and I could have done it with this but I didn't want to go completely dark and I could have done just this part but I just wasn't feeling it. It's weird but sometimes I'll just look at something there's certain things I want to do to it and certain things I don't. This is, this is enough which is going to work for me and when you see it up you'll understand where I was going with it. So I will be back. I'm just going to trace this out, cut it, and cut the material. Okay, I wanted to show you. I hope you can see this. Can you see inside or the back end how I put some cardboard? And depending on if I'm going to keep it up this way or hang it and ha use it as a dish towel holder will determine how far in or out I keep the cardboard. And again, here it is, the um, stain is dry. My hands have stained from before. It's not like it's coming off now. But it's perfect for what I want to use it for. So, let me clean this up. Okay guys, what I've done now is I've just put some of the um, straw into the top and it has the cardboard at the bottom and I pushed it down to about where I want it. Now this is for the one to stand, <clears throat> not the one that's going to go hanging as, uh, you know, <laughs> I just said it, um, dish towel, let me get it straight. Okay, and I forgot to tell you also, um, I'm using the straw flowers. These we used to be able to get in all different colors, and, but it, this color is perfectly fine with me because this is all I would use anyway. All right, so I have the 
straw and then we're going to put some of these little straw flowers which I think are absolutely adorable only thing is they break off really easy <clears throat> they're very fragile and <clears throat> let's add okay so I put the straw flowers in and they're kind of fragile that's the only thing they're so doggone cute so cute okay so we have that and let's add a couple wooden spoons. Which one's taller? Let's do three. I want it over here. seeing this and let's not forget our egg gonna have our eggs right I'm gonna just perch ham Whoop. so there you go now what you could do, <clears throat> if you wanted, since this is going to be sitting, you could put some more of this straw in the bottom. If you didn't want the hole showing, you could even put some so you don't see the cardboard. But where I'm going to put it, if I do put it standing, I don't know if I'm going to put this standing or hanging. But I may put a little bit of the straw down in here to hide that a little bit. But as you can see, it looks more rustic now with that antiquing. This would be a someone that really loves uh, farmhouse style. What a cute hostess gift to take for the holidays coming up or just if you your girlfriends and you are getting together at one someone's house making dinner. Wouldn't that be cute? You could stain the wooden spoons if you wanted. You could also put a, uh, a bow with raffia right here, which if I do leave it standing, I probably will. But how cute is that and how easy? And so all together, 78 cents, had the eggs. These are at Hobby Lobby. I think these are $11.98, but if you use the coupon, it's half of that, so $6. And this was three. But some, I'm sure a lot of you have these already Doris and your one right you could use that just put some straw put some straw flowers or silk flowers whatever you want wooden spoons a couple eggs and there you go another easy peasy the 1980s meeting 2017 farmhouse 1980 country 2017 farmhouse you guys you have a great day and I will be back in just a minute to show you what it looks like hanging up Okay guys, I went ahead and I went upstairs and got some of my raffia. I wanted to show you too. I, sh I said this once before in another video, but I want to say it again. Okay, you know how you get the pieces and they're kind of thick? I mean, look at this piece. Okay, if you tied that in a bow, it's not going to make it very thick. And it might be the way you want it, and if it is, that's fine. But that's not the way I like it, so... For me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to rip it. Let you see. See how I can rip it? Well, the more you rip it and the more you put it together, it's going to make it thicker when you tie it into a bow. So I'm going to rip it a little bit more. Take it and just 
thread it through. Oh, lost an egg. I'll go get it in a minute. Oh, lost the other one. <laughs> you gotta love it. All right. I'll get them back in a minute. Don't you worry. Don't you worry at all about that one. So, I always scrunch them up a little bit. Now, obviously, you're not going to want tangled. I'm teasing. You're not going to want that long of a... And if you wanted to keep this permanent, well, it's not going to be jumping out anyway. You're not going to be moving it around, but you could glue it. But you know me, I'm not, in case I want to change something. Okay, so let's cut this. Let's just cut this right there. We can use that for something else. So, there it is with the bow. And like I said, if... I keep it this way when I do my home tour. All the DIYs that you've seen from my kitchen, you'll see where I've put everything when I do my home tour. Uh, since my house has been put back together since the flood and how I have transitioned into farmhouse with a lot of my decorating for my kitchen and family room and dining, uh, family room, dining room. So I hope you will try this and let's see. Let's put him down a little bit. I don't want him flying out. And I will be back to show you where is the camera. You can't see the whole thing. I'll take pictures so you can see it up close and personal. And um, I'll be back in a minute so you can see it where, as hanging on the wall. All right. Well, I'll be right back and I'll show you what it looks like turned over with a dish towel in it. Okay, I've taken it all apart, as you can see, and I've moved the cardboard towards the, well, it's the bottom now, but was the top, because you need more room here now, right, to put your stuff in. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to hold this and put everything together, but I'm gonna put it back just like I did for the other one that you just saw, and then I will put the uh, piece of material that I cut and when it's on the wall, I'll be right back. But it's going to be exactly like it was, only reversed. Okay? I'll be back in a minute. Okay, guys, I wanted to show you something before I hang it. Okay, since I've just had the um, kitchen painted, you know, when they came in and had to redo everything because of the flood, the back of this, you know how these are really sharp? Well. The way I'm going to hang it, I'm just putting a nail under here, and if this rubs, it's going to scratch the paint. So what I did is I just took a napkin and I taped it, so now it, there's no uh, sharpness. So it's not going to hurt the wall if it gets by accident, you know, moved a little bit. It's not going to do any damage to my wall. So I just wanted to give you the heads up on that in case you want to do it like this. You can put it on a piece of board if you want and mount it to a piece of board and then put it on the wall. I'm just putting mine just the way it is without having anything, a uh, piece of wood mounted or anything. So I just wanted to tell you that before I put it up. I didn't want to forget to tell you that. Okay guys, it's done and hanging. And be a little closer. So you see what's holding this kitchen conversions is the dark and like I said, I could have spray painted the grater with the Rust-Oleum oil rub bronze, but I didn't want to. I just wanted to kind of rough it up a little bit. And there is the piece of material. Dish cloth. I'm going to do another DIY with this material as well. But I have I had all along known that I was going to use it for this as well. 
So guys, that is the cheese grater Dorsan. I hope this helps you. And I will be back with another DIY very shortly. Okay guys, you take care. Okay guys, here it is. Here it is hanging. And that fabric really looks cute with it. I have another DIY that I'm gonna be doing with this material in the upcoming weeks. So I hope that you like this DIY and Doris and I hope that you will try one of these with your cheese grater. I hope this helps. I think I'm going to do one more with another cheese grater and that will be in an upcoming tutorial as well. So guys, you take care, have a great day and I will be talking to you really soon. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.